But I want you to get ready for the word of God. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Verses 1 through 11. How many of you know God has smiled on you? Let me say that again. Cause how many of you know God has really smiled on you? <laughs> Each and every day, your eyes open, your feet at the floor. God is smiling on you. While you're laying in the bed in an unconscious state of mind, not knowing what's going on around you, God is smiling on you. How many know that if it had not been for the Lord smiling on you, you wouldn't be here today? Huh? God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me he has set me free God has smiled on me he's been good to me I came to him just as I was Weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a sweet old resting place. And now I am glad. Help me sing today. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Help me sing today. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good. He's been good, he's been good, he's been good, he's been good, he's been good. When I woke up this morning, he wiped the tears from my eyes. I looked all around me and my family was doing fine. God has been so good to me. 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 He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. To me. That's my testimony, y'all. That's my testimony. I, I, I don't know about you, but that's my testimony about how good God has been to me. That's my testimony about the goodness of Jesus. That's my testimony. How he carried me out of my mess. 
That's my testimony. My testimony is different from your testimony. But every time I think of his goodness and all he's done for me. Hey! 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 The Bible says the frequent fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving an old wretch like me. Amen. Acts chapter 12. I feel good, y'all. I feel good. If I get happy, just, just wave your hands and just look past me. Because when, when you think about the things God has done for you, huh? Every morning you wake up and your body racked with pain, but yet it's still God gives you the strength to go on a little further. You, you don't know what I'm talking about if you haven't been there. Lord, have mercy. You got to sit on the edge of the bed until your knees decide they want to move. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When you stand up, you got to bend back because your back said not yet. See, you don't know what God has done for me. Yeah. You get to work and, and on your way, on your way to the door to get to the job, you got to walk light. You're going in there praying for other people, but not knowing that you're hurting yourself. <sighs> Lord has been good to me. <laughs> Here we go. Acts chapter 12. Reading from the Message Bible. Mine may read a little bit different than yours, but we're still reading the same thing. Amen? That's when King Harriet got it into his head to go after some of the church members, he murdered James, John's brother. When he saw how much it raised his popularity rating with the Jews, he arrested Peter. All this doing Passover week, mind you, and he had thrown, he had him thrown in jail, putting four squads of four soldiers each. To guard him. You do know that 16, right? He was planning a public lynching after Passover. All the time that Peter was under heavy guard in the jailhouse, the church prayed for him. Oh, Lord Jesus. Then the time came for Harriet to bring him out of, for the kill. That night, even though shackled to two soldiers, one on each side, Peter slept like a baby. And there were guards at the door keeping their eyes on the place. Harriet was taking no chances. Suddenly, there was an angel at his side and light flooding the room. The angel shook Peter and got him up. Hurry! The handcuffs fell off his wrist. The angel said, get dressed. Put on your shoes. Peter did it. Then grab your coat and let's get out of here. Peter followed him but didn't believe it was really an angel. He thought he was dreaming. Past the first guard and then the second, they came to the iron gate that led into the city. It swung open before them on his own and they were out on the streets free as the breeze and the first at the first intersection the angel left him going his own way verse 11 that's when Peter realized it was no dream I can't believe it this really happened 
the master sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's vicious little production and the spectacle the Jews, the Jewish mob was looking forward to. I just want to talk for a minute. The power of a praying church. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, a praying church is a powerful church. Thank you, ushers, for standing so diligently. Thank you for standing. Let me start right out by saying that any preacher who is not praying is plain. Let me say that again. Any preacher who is not praying is plain. And any church which is not praying is strained. Any church which is not praying is straying. The mounting problems of our society can never be solved with plain preachers and straying churches. I certainly don't want to be labeled as a plain preacher. And I know you don't want to be labeled as a straying preacher church. Therefore, we must challenge each other to keep the lines of communication open with the Lord. Today, we will examine together the powerful church. There are certain ingredients, virtues, practices, and characteristics that go into making a powerful church. These characteristics have nothing to do with the size of the building, the size of the budget, or the number of members on the row. If we look back in scripture to ancient Babylon, there is a story told of a church with no building, no budget, and only three members. Yet, these three members were powerful enough to take the heat out of a blazing furnace and summon the very physical presence of the Lord. I'm sure you know of them. I'm talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three members standing up can have more power than thousand members bowing down. So the characteristics of a powerful church has nothing to do with the buildings, budgets, and numbers. So what constitutes a powerful church? We're safe in saying that a powerful church is a Bible-believing church. We're also safe in saying that a powerful church is a spirit-filled church. And we could go even a little further by saying that a powerful church is a witnessing church and a tithing church. 